We are so fortunate to be joined right now by Jock with with by or joined. I don't know. I can't even speak anymore. I've lost all track of. Here I am. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, joining us is Dr. Jonathan Tarbox. He is the head of research and development here at the Center for Autism and Related Disorders, and you're also the director of the Autism Research Group. That's correct. Uh, a lot of credentials there, and you stop by with us frequently on Fridays to talk about a wide range of topics. If you guys have questions, uh, now is a great time to write in on autism-live.com, or you can email in. Or phone in, you can tweet in, Facebook in, whatever flips your Carrier pigeon. Carrier pigeon. We haven't done that before. We should do that. <laughs> uh, but in any case, uh, to get the ball rolling, I had talked to you the other day about the fact that today's jargon is DTT. Mm -hmm. And if you would, because I've given the, the, <laughs> the definition for the day, but mine is the parent's definition. Sure. And so uh, we'd rather hear it from somebody who really knows what we're talking about. Okay. DTT. Tell us a little bit about why this is so important to us those of us who okay. have children on the autism spectrum. Right, so DTT stands for discrete trial training or discrete trial teaching, uh, and it's actually the most proven teaching technique for teaching new skills to children with autism. It's the one technique that has by far the most research supporting it. Um, earlier versions of comprehensive ABA intervention for children with autism that were developed in the 60s and 70s were almost all DTT, uh, and that's where the sort of um, common misconception that ABA is all sort of drill instructor type overly rigid you know drill and kill practice that's where that came from because early on ABA was almost all DTT for children with autism that's not the case any longer mm -hmm. however it is still a critical component of any good quality skill acquisition program for kids with autism, especially younger children. And what it, what it looks like is this. DTT, the whole point b behind DTT is to break down the teacher-student interactions into very clear uh, learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. The whole idea behind ABA is the more learning opportunities you have, the faster you're going to learn, right? Same reason why you go to a foreign country if you want to learn a, uh, the second language, you go there. Why? Because it's just constant learning opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with DTT. We take instruction time and we break it down into discrete, clear learning opportunities and then we present lots of them. Mm -hmm. So we get the maximum amount of learning in the shortest amount of time possible. Great. That's the whole idea behind it. And what it looks like is... Um, uh, one discrete trial consists of an instruction delivered by the teacher, or sometimes it's called the SD, uh, an opportunity for the student to respond, and then a clear consequence for that response that's delivered by the teacher. And so the idea is you give an instruction, the student that, that tells the student, okay, time to respond. You're expected to pay attention and respond. Mm -hmm. They do their best and then they get a clear consequence for it. If they uh, make an attempt at, at responding correctly or they get something close enough to being correct that the team counts as a correct response, they get a reward. They get a big mm -hmm. reinforcer. If they make a mistake, then they get some help. They get a prompt to, uh, to help them be correct on the next trial. Okay. Um, but it's basically just breaking down learning into discrete learning opportunities. Instruction, response, consequence. Okay. Now, already I have some things. and I, I so appreciated that you explained that it, uh, at one time ABA was predominantly DTT because this is one of my big pet peeves in life right. is that people tend to think that ABA and DTT are synonymous. Yeah, and that that's not crazy. at all true. That's it isn't true. true. Um, and we, we see all these myths of, that I, come along with ABA that I think stem from that. Right. I've shared before that the first pediatrician that diagnosed my son, de developmental pediatrician, said, please don't do ABA with him because it'll turn him into a robot. Amazing, yeah. But I think it's because she had seen old tapes of DTT yeah. and did not understand. Right. But, I, you know, and I do have to say, though, uh, even those old tapes that you watch from the 70s, they're not making kids into robots. They were right. the, That was the first treatment programs to produce robust, incredible treatment effects for children with autism. So, so she just it, was in the left field picking yeah, daisies. Yeah, that then. was a total okay. mischaracterization. Yeah. Okay. Um, but then when you break it down and you say, okay, we're, we're creating this moment where there's these clear consequences, mm -hmm. I can just hear, because for me... The negative connotation. Yeah, the yeah, negative right. connotation of consequence. Then we go into that myth, and somebody just wrote in the other day and said something about ABA because of the corporal punishment. Yeah, no, that's ridiculous. No um, corporal punishment anymore. What I mean by consequence, there's yeah. really two different types of consequences that you have in discrete mm -hmm. trial training. Either there's a correct response on the part of the student, which gets a really great consequence, positive mm -hmm. reinforcement, big reward, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and whatever's motivating to the student, right? So right. it could be praise, it could be a snack, it could be tokens, it could be points, it could be a high five, it could be tickles, whatever matters to the student. 
Uh, so correct response equals big positively reinforcing consequence. Right. Okay. If the student doesn't make a correct response, you don't punish it. We don't do punishment. There's no negative consequences. Right. You simply provide help on the next trial. So we right. call it a correction procedure. Right. So for example, um, if I'm teaching you uh, to learn your address, let's mm -hmm. say for you know for safety reasons, and I say what's your address, and you don't make the right response, or you right. make an incorrect response, um, or you just say I can't remember. Right. Then I would say okay, nice try, and and. So that's sort of a neutral consequence that I would right. immediately follow it up with a correction procedure, which is a prompt. So right. I'd say again, what's my address? 306 North Sagra. Right. And so I'm giving a model for you, and now right. you imitate it and you say, all right, great job. Now let's try it again without without help. Okay. But I just wanted to clarify that because I think a lot of people, yeah. And and so if you're having, if you're doing ABA and somebody is in any way punishing your child, if there's any kind of corporal punishment, it, they're not doing ABA. They right. might That's, say they're doing right. ABA, but they're not doing ABA. Right. Right. So really important distinction. And, and I'm always saying about DTT that the amazing thing for me is, and I said this earlier, that there was a moment when I thought my son was unteachable. Mm -hmm. And you guys showing me how to teach him something in that little sliver of a moment, that opportunity, that DTT showed me as mm -hmm. a parent that he's infinitely teachable. Absolutely. And you know, uh, another really common misconception about DTT is that it's overly structured or it's rigid or it's kind of harsh or negative, like mm -hmm. the drill instructor type right. thing. Right, right. That's, there's nothing about DTT that is overly structured, rigid, robotic, repetitive, none of that. That's just how some people who are poorly trained implement right. DTT. DTT simply means a clear instruction, clear opportunity to respond, and a clear consequence, either right. positive reinforcement or, or correction procedure. Uh, so, you know, a lot of learning situations that you and I engage in all the time, if you look at it, that's actually what's going on. Mm -hmm. So what does a math tutor do with a typically developing kid who's having a tough time with math? They give them clear instructions, they ask the kid to give it their best shot, the kid tries, and then they give them clear feedback. Right. That's DTT. Um, if I, you know, if we're practicing basketball and I hand you the ball and I say, all right, take a shot. You do your best, and then I give you clear feedback. That's DTT. Right. Okay? Um, so there's a million things, um, a, a million totally normal learning situations in our regular environment that are basically discrete trial training. We just don't yeah. call it that and don't think about it like that. Okay. So. And a lot of people tend to think, because now in the age of YouTube, there are all these videos of DTT, and a lot of times it's a therapist sitting with a child at a table right. because that's a convenient way to do it, but right. it doesn't mean you have to have a table. You're not no. always sitting there with cards at a table. No. It fact, doesn't always look like that. No. In fact, what a smart thing to do is do it in a format that'll be fun for the student exactly. and the student will like. You know, So yeah, learning to sit at a table, if the kid doesn't like that, that in itself eventually is an important thing to learn, right. but you don't have to sit at a table to do DTT. You can sit on the floor. Lots of our therapists just hang out on the floor with yeah. the kid, you know, uh, crisscross uh, legs, you know, because yeah. the kid likes that better. It's more fun. You could sit on the couch and do it. Sometimes we'll even have the kid sit in the mom's lap. If the kid mm -hmm. is afraid of uh, leaving the mom's lap, fine, sit in the lap. And then the reinforcer there is the mom playing with the kid when they make a correct response. That's so, so important. Yeah, there's John. a million ways you can do it. I, I, you know, because a lot of people, and I know I felt like this the first time I saw a, a video of DTT that I thought, well, that's great if the child can sit in a chair, but my child couldn't sit in the chair. Right. When we started. Yeah, and, and they didn't start at the table in the chair. They didn't in any way, shape, or form start there. Right. But as a result of what they did, my child eventually sat in the chair just fine mm -hmm. and was able to go to kindergarten and sit in his desk just That's right. fine. That's right. Um, but we build to those things. So, so amazing. Here's a general way that people should think about DTT. Okay. DTT is a way to give lots of positive reinforcement. That's there. what it's for. It's right. not a way to make kids do a bunch of work or drill kids or any of that. It's a way to make sure the kid can get lots of positive reinforcement. That's a great way of looking at it. And absolutely essential for those of us who have children on the autism spectrum that we become aware of, and I suggest as a parent, that we become good at teaching in this manner because it's a great way to introduce a whole bunch of skills. Absolutely. But it's not the only thing we need to do. It's not That's the right. only step uh, at all. Just one tool in the toolkit. One tool, DTT, pretty amazing. Amazing.